Okay, so let's start doing some queries on players. So let me create a query object for a player. And I want to ask a different type of question. The player class has a column called market value, which is a number. Now, when you have a column of type number, you can start asking questions like, give return me all values where the number is less than or greater than a certain other value. So that's the kind of question I want to ask here. So I want to ask less than market value 1,500. So this will then return all players with a market value of less than 1,500. And again, like before, you just run, run q.find, then function. This is going to return an array, so it'll be a, I'll call it players. And then I want to loop through it. So var i is equal to zero. i is less than players.length plus plus. And then what do I want to print out? In fact, let me get rid of it. I don't want this console anymore. Let's give it some space. In fact, let's get rid of it there. I want to do var player is equal to players i. So let's get the actual player object. And then let's log something else. Console log player.get name market value of less than 1.5 million plus player.get value. Now let's just pause here for a second and just look at this get function. So we know that the player object, the player instance, has various values like name, like team code, like market value. And you might expect to be able to get access to them just by typing player.name, player.market value. But that's not how parse works. Parse works by storing all of the data in an object called attributes. Okay. So you could type attributes dot attributes name and get the attribute data like that. But also has a nice shortcut function called get. So you can just say player dot get name. That's just how parse works. We use set to set field values and we use get to get field values. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using get to get the field values. Okay. So now let's open the console. Let's refresh to make sure it's got the latest code and again hit run because here we go. So these are the players that have a market value of less than 1.5 million. Now just ignore the fact that the numbers are looks like um, 1000. The data I got was a little bit off. You need to multiply all the numbers in market value by 1000. Apologies for that but it's good enough for our purposes. Okay so that's another type of question you can ask which is less than. Okay. You can also combine them together. So let me get rid of the console again. So let's run the same query. I want to start commenting these ones above out to clear it out. So as well as less than, we can also then say op q dot equal to position keeper. So this will then only return the players that are keepers that are less than 1.5 million. And again, if I run that, hit run. So you can see less players are returned because these are only the keepers, which is a position in football, a position of a player in football. So you can, you can combine as many of these little constraints as you want when constructing your query. And you can also define an ordering. So since we're really talking about market value here, let's say the market value is 5 million. We can also say return as the results descending by market value. Okay, so that means by descending means by highest market value to the lowest market value. So now if I clear this and run, okay, here we go. So you can see it's now got much more results and you can see it's returning by highest market value down to lowest market value. So that's what descending does. And there's also ascending as well, which goes from lowest to highest.